So on this channel, we've had a few requests now to look into how you can both predict a draw and how you can predict what the correct score is going to be for a game. So today we're going to be doing a bit of both. Mainly we're going to be looking at how we can predict the draws coming in the game. But along with that, you can also obviously predict if a game is going to be nil-nil, if it's going to be one-nil. You get the kind of idea with it. But as always, if you've got any requests for videos you want to see on this channel, be sure to let me know it down in the comments. They're the first videos I always look to make. Any video that gets requested by you guys goes right to the front of the queue because I know it's exactly what you guys want to see. But let's get straight into it. So, before on this channel we've done laying the draw. Very simple betting strategy. You wait till the second half between the 60th and 70th minute. The game's still at a draw and you think someone's going to score. So you lay the draw, get profit when a goal goes in. It is very simple. This time around we're actually going to be looking at how we can predict a draw is going to happen. And then we're going to back the drawing odds. Now you also, if you're new to the channel, might be sat there thinking, well if you can predict the draw is going to happen, why are you doing it on the exchange? Why don't you just go do it at a bookmaker and do it like a normal bet? And it's very simple. The reason why I always recommend football trading over betting itself is because with football trading, you've got insurance with it. You can easily take out a little bit of your stake, all your stake. You can bet against yourself. You can equal out your loss. If you put a bet on, chances are if it doesn't come in, you lose all your money. Whereas on the Betfair exchange or any other exchange you want to use, if the bet still doesn't come through, you can still actually make quite a bit of profit. And the majority of the time doing these trading strategies, we don't actually get the outcome we're looking for, but we get enough time in the market with everything we predict to happen happening, and then we can extract enough profit to make it worthwhile. So that's why I always recommend football trading. The one downside to football trading is most exchanges take a commission. Smarkets doesn't, but Betfair, which is my preferred one, takes a 5% commission. But if you use the link down in the description to sign up, you'll get your first month with zero commission. So makes it a lot better for you guys. So we're going to look at it today then. You can see over here we've got the Betfair exchange loaded up. I've got all the games selected that are happening today. And there's quite a few ways that you can see if a draw is looking likely the first one is the most standard one and that's to just look at the stats if you use the soccer stats website obviously it has a multitude of different stats available that cover pretty much everything you could ever want to see if for example we looked at tottenham southampton you'll be able to see down here that the most common score line for tottenham and southampton at home is one nil to tottenham for Southampton, it's 1-0 for Southampton. It's It tells you pretty much everything you need. You, know, you can see the most common score lines at halftime. You can see where they are in the league table in terms of attacking and defending. You can see where they are in the league table in terms of home and away form. You can see where they are in the actual league table and where they are in the form table. It tells you everything you could possibly want to know, which is really helpful when looking for stats like this. So that is how you can use the stats. You can obviously look into these in loads of detail and try and decipher whether or not it's going to be a draw. The most obvious way to do it is to look at what the most common score lines are at half time, where they are in the league table, where they're good in current form at the moment, what are their most recent results, everything like that you can analyse. But obviously, another way you can decide if it's going to be a draw or not is to use the market. You don't need to spend hours looking at stats sometimes you can just look at the market and see where it's sat at to decide whether or not it's going to be a draw. So if we look at the market here for that Tottenham Southampton game, I wouldn't have said that it was going to be a draw. You can tell by the stats it didn't look like there was going to be a draw. And the market itself also suggests Tottenham are the favourites, which obviously you'd understand. And with Southampton being quite high at the forwards, you know they're not likely to get anything from the game either. So the market is already telling us there that this game probably isn't going to be a draw. Now, if you're just using the market and you want to know specifically what to look out for, then you want both teams, so the home team and the away team, to both have lower than 3.0 odds. 3.0 is roughly the breaking point to when a team stops being a favourite and becomes a underdog for certain games. So you can see here Southampton, underdog, Tottenham, favourite. Aston Villa, definitely an underdog. Manchester City, definitely the favourite. 
if both are under 3.0, then both of them are kind of not the favourites, but not the underdogs. Basically, it's a coin flip, and they don't know which way the game's going to go. So if you can find a game where both have 3.0 or less, then you know a draw is looking fairly likely. For example, we have got over here, Wickham, Bristol City, 2.68, 2.94. Bristol City slightly the favourite of the two, but not too much of a favourite. It is definitely a game where a draw could be an option, or the markets are suggesting a draw could be an option anyway. So then the next step you've got whenever you've decided a game is going to be a draw, either through the stats or through the market, you then want to make sure that both the teams are either really high scoring teams, so both can get a really high scoring draw, or both teams are really low scoring teams. You don't want a team that's in the middle. You want both to either be awful or both to be brilliant, because you either want lots of goals or none. It is as simple as that. So when you get to this point, you can again go back to the stats. Go back to the stats, check how many goals the teams have scored recently, how many they've conceded, what they're more likely to be at half-time and full-time. You can keep checking all of that. You can check in as much detail as you want, or, again, you can just use the market. So if we're using the market, and we've already selected this Wickham at Bristol City game, we're then going to go to under and over 2.5 goals, and this time around, we're going to be looking at the under 2.5 goal market, and we want it to be one. 0.65 or lower so we've got 1.83 here the average is 1.9 and with us wanting 1.6 or lower you can tell that this game doesn't actually look like it's going to be that low scoring you can see there is predicted to be goals in this game but it's still a question now of your judgment you can do as much research as you want you can do anything you want in terms of preparing for games but when it comes down to it it is completely up to you you might have a gut feeling about some games Obviously, the favourite doesn't always win. You can do hours of research and still end up losing. It's completely up to you. But the more research you do, the more likely you are to make some profit. So we could still go for this Wickham Bristol City game here. Let me just get the stats up on this website and just double check what they are saying. So you can see here, by the looks of things, Wickham's favourite thing to do at half time is to be nil nil. Bristol City's favourite thing to do at halftime is either be losing 1-0 or drawing 0-0. And then the most common results up here, you can see Wickham like to win 1-0 at home. But Bristol City very rarely draw 0-0 away from home. It's only happened once. So maybe that isn't the best thing to do here. But then again, we have got a few 1-1s, 2-2s, a 1-1 over here for Bristol, for Wickham as well, I should say. So it is, again, completely up to your judgment. The most promising thing here is, we can see they do both like to be drawing at half-time. So if we got to half-time and it was still a draw, we would have made some substantial profit and we would be able to start extracting some of that profit to make sure we don't lose any money. So personally, I would go for this game. I would back the draw, maybe put on 20, 30 pounds, and as the game went on, hoping it would still be nil-nil, I'd then slowly start to withdraw my stake. Pretty much like you do with the over 2.5 goals. It's almost identical to that one, except if a goal goes in here, it's not the end of the world. Because a draw is still fairly likely to happen. A draw can happen with 10 goals in the game, 12 goals in the game, as many goals as you want. But with the under 2.5 goals... The second one goal goes in, you've lost the majority of your stake. But doing the draw is a bit more safer, and we can predict it a little bit more as well. So I would probably go for this with the Wickham at Bristol City game. But there's loads of methods you can use to predict these draws. The next key bit of information is, does any team out of these teams need a win? Do they desperately need a win? Because if they desperately need a win, that's going to put things in a little bit harder to predict territory because although you can predict what teams have done all season if a team suddenly starts fighting really hard for the wins that they need anything can change and the stats go out the window so if we look at the league table which is the best judge of this you can see that Wickham a bomb are they looking like they're going to stay up probably not so you can probably say they're down and they won't care too much Bristol City also look as if 
their smack bang and big table already confirmed to be up 50 points is what you need in the championship. You've got to argue that they don't really care about this game either. So we've got two teams there who probably won't really be caring about it as much. That can either mean it's going to be a massive high scoring game or it's just going to be a dull nil nil. But there we go, that's a few little methods you can use to predict some draws. So what I'm actually going to do now is go do some research myself and I'm going to select three games that I think tonight will end up being a draw and then we'll come back afterwards and see if I was right for any of them. So then the two games I've selected are Ross County versus St Mirren and Hoffenheim versus Gladbach. I haven't used the market to suggest these, I've just used stats because they're the ones I prefer and I prefer looking at them, I feel like they're a little bit easier for me to get my head around. But we can see Ross County St Mirren over 3.0 for the draw which is a perfect set of odds because it leaves enough room for them odds to drop for you to be able to extract some profit. We then got Hoffenheim and Gladbach. 3.85 odds for the draw again huge room for them odds to be able to drop as the game stays at a draw to be for you to be able to get that profit out so if we look at hoffenheim gladbach you can see hoffenheim's last two games have both been nil nil whereas gladbach won four nil but then there was a draw before then their most recent away game was a draw hoffenheim's most recent home game was a draw if we look down at the most common score lines they've had at half time both teams Topping it out with nil nils, and then Gladbach. Although they do tend to be winning at half time most of the time, full time they tend to draw 2 2, 3 3, 1 1, nil nil. All there in their score lines for being away from home. Hoffenheim's favourite home result, apart from a 3 1 defeat, is nil nil. So I would go for that one. I wouldn't be as confident with this one because there does seem to be a lot of goals flying around. So you never know where that will end up. But I would be quite happy taking this one to at least half time with the draw bet on. Just because both do tend to like being at nil nil. We then have Ross County and St Mirren. You can see here St Mirren seem to love a draw. Not so much the last four games but before then it looks like it's all they did. So I will be very comfortable with them already. And then if we look at their score lines at half time, again, both really enjoy that nil-nil score line. And then at full time, it is their least favourite result, which is a bit strange, but it does tell us that there's a lot more action second half. So again, with this team in this game, I'd probably only recommend staying until half time, although they do still like a 1-1 draw. So this would purely depend on your judgment yet again. I'm sure there'll be some other stats on this website that would help you decide at what point to get out of the bet. But I'd never recommend staying in the full 90 minutes at a draw unless maybe it's 1-0 and the other team's really attacking. As always, try and watch the games. There's no better way to judge what's going on than watching the game yourself. You can read every stat, but watching the game yourself and using your own judgment is always the best way to go. But that's all I'm going to say about judging the draw. So what we'll do... We'll go ahead to tonight and I will come back once both these games are over and we'll see if either were a nil-nil draw or if they were just a draw in general and we'll see what's happened. I'm not going to put any money on these two just because there's not actually enough money to be able to probably bet freely with a Scottish League game, but there would be with this game. But I'm just going to leave it for today. No bets, just seeing whether or not they do end up in a draw. So I'll come back once these games are finished. And we'll see if my predictions were right. So the three games are now all over. And no, none of them ended in a draw. But like I said before, we're not looking for it to finish as a draw. Because we're not betting as that being our only outcome. We would gradually have reduced our stake in some of these games. Or we would have cashed them out at the best possible value. Like you do with all football trades. You're not always looking for that exact outcome. You're just looking to have that outcome look possible for long enough for you to get a profit. So with the three games, if we look at Wickham, Bristol City, that was one of the ones that was first looked at, looking through just the betting odds rather than looking at the stats. And we can see it did end 2-1 to Wickham, but Wickham did score really late on with a 93rd minute penalty. So actually in this game, the key stat we need to learn is how long was it a draw for during the game? Because that then is the time we'll be using to get the best odds and get the best profit extracted from our bet. 
So for Wigan Bristol City, the total draw time for the game was 53 minutes. You can see up to the 28th minute it was a draw, and then between the 65th minute and the 93rd minute it was also a draw. So during them minutes, we will have been able to get better odds from when we put our bet on right at the start of the game, and we would have been able to gradually withdraw a stake and get a good cash out value. So that was already a good start there. So that game was fairly well predicted, even though it wasn't me who predicted it. We then move on to Ross County versus St Mirren. That game ended 3-1. But as you can see, it took a while for the first goal to go in. It took 17 minutes, so we would have been able to get some good profit there. And then even if you weren't able to get some profit in that first 17 minutes, St Mirren scored fairly early on in the second half, meaning there was another big chunk here of the game being at a draw. So again, the odds would have been fine during them few minutes for you to be able to get some profit from your bet. So for that game, there was a total of 38 minutes worth of draw. So we've so far had two big periods of draw where we'll be able to get some profit. So I feel like these two games were successful, as was Hoffenheim and Gladbach. Wasn't as successful as the other two, but it would have been a lot more successful if we did used the Paddy Power 2-up method. If you don't know what I'm going on about, check out the video on the channel for that method. But as you can see, your two-up method essentially is you bet for a team to go two goals up, you get the profit from one site, and then you get the profit from another site when they eventually don't end up winning that game. So it would have been perfect for the Gladbach game. As we can see though, we did get 24 minutes initially of it being a draw, and then we got a tiny little bit of a draw there as well between Hoffenheim's second and third goal. So we only got 29 minutes in total, which isn't great, but... Again, it's still better than nothing. If you'd have put the bet on right at the start, you would have had the first 24 minutes to make some profit. And then you would have also had these five minutes here to make some profit as well if you didn't get your cash out in time for that first goal. I did end up doing the over 2.5 goal method, or the under 2.5 goal method, I should say, for the Hoffenheim Gladbach game. So we did manage to get some profit today out of our bet. Let me just open this up and show you that. You can see there we managed to make £3.57 after the 5% commission, of course, from Betfair. So that was a good little return from a £10 bet on the Hoffenheim Gladbach game. But there you go, it's as simple as that. Yes, our method didn't actually end up predicting a draw. There was quite a few games tonight that did end in a draw, but we didn't predict any of them. But the key thing to take from here is we predicted some games where there was a huge period of it being a draw in the game. And the odds for it to be a draw before the game kicked off were fairly high. So we would have been able to extract quite a big bit of profit from each of them three games. Not all right at the start. Some of them we would have had to have held on our stake till later on in the second half. But all three of them would have gave us a profit if we cashed out at just the right time. So if you enjoyed this video today, please be sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button if you're new as well. But please also do let me know down in the comments any sort of video you want to see on this channel and i'll be sure to get it done doesn't need to be specific to football trading it can be anything as long as it's working around making some money online in case you're wondering we've got quite a few videos coming up in the next few weeks we've got a week-long video of me following trades or just following bets from a football tipster over on twitter we then got a day working over on clickworker and we've got a load more in the pipeline too. But if you've got a specific request, let me know down below and I'll get working on it. But thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.